Advocating Investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the July 6th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Steve E. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that, and that's this, during the next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. Let those figures do the walking. Go ahead and send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, inside our Tiger's Den, well, any and every ping will do, although Stevie likes those private pings. It's just easier to keep track of your request out there. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to Lush Show. A mixed bag out here. The Dow's off 43. The S&P's down 1. NASDAQ's up 33. Russell's off 17. Semis are up 13. Trend is off 105. Composite's up 6. Wilshire 5000 is back 65 bucks. Gold's off 28. Silver's up 7 cents. Lights we crude back a buck 70. Natural gas is off a penny. 30 year treasury's down uh, 1 point and 8 ticks. She's trading out at 139.29. So quite a mixed bag out here. Leading the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you got Google up 14 bucks or 6 tenths. Pool Corp up 11 bucks or 3%. Northrop Grumman up 2 and a quarter percent or 11 bucks basically. Granger is up uh, 10 bucks, 2 and a quarter percent. IDEX Lab is up 2 and 7 tenths or about $10 as well. Well, to the downside, you've got Booking Holdings off 26 buck. I don't know how to pronounce that next one. It's off $20. Beige, nay. I don't really know how that one is pronounced. Argenix, though, I can pronounce that. That's off 15 bucks or 4%. HubSpot down 13, 4%. Lithium Motors 11 and 4% as well. So we got plenty to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. But let's go look at what we should be watching today. We can take a look at that. I think that the uh, the day kind of boils down to the 60-minute time frame set of charts out here for the four equity future contracts. So we're going to flip over to those. And what I mean by that is the following. First of all, if you take a look at the ES Mini, lower uh, upper left-hand corner out here, uh, at 11 o'clock uh, yesterday, morning out here you had a nice td nine count bottom that uh, formed and uh, price made its way all the way up to breakdown support where the sellers are at and that's at 34 77 38 44 75 we can see that this level has been attacked four different times out there so we know that support is going to be that td nine count bottom price never even made its way back quite frankly to the top of that profile out there so it's above support it's bullish but bearish so it's neutral bullish because price above the profile bearish, if you will, because price is below that resistance level of 38.44.75. So what are you going to watch after 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, after the Fed new minutes are, re are released? If you get a 30-minute close above 38.44.75, the markets are headed higher. The ES Mini or the S&P is headed higher. If it doesn't take that level out, you might see a move down to 37.90, uh, 37.71, 37.53. If we take a look at the NQ, so and the NQ and the ES are controlling the top. So they're containing price. What I mean by that, in the case of the NQ, it has both a TD9 count top. That formed here at uh, 2,200 hours last night, and that high has not been taken out, which means not a close above. I don't care if you if you um, ping above it, but it's a close above it that would only negate that TD9 count. And then 
what we have out here. This occurred by uh, noontime today. Uh, that is a uh, Rhodes Mint indicator top out there. So you got two different topping patterns. So that says that price would need to close. If you see close price close above 1180, 1182.50, that's going to suggest higher price, probably an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now that's the upside resistance level or what's controlling the upside to the downside even though the russell has been off uh, it's more it's down about 17 18 points right now what it hasn't done it hasn't busted through a level of support now in the case of the russell 2000 so i've switched to the lower right hand chart out there price has gotten back and tested the top of that profile and that's at 17 1870 so no closes below that out there so there's your support level and in the case of the dow equity future contract so we move over to the left its support level is 3714 it's in essence been tested and rejected so we we know which charts are the time frames that are controlling price out there my suggestion is to watch these the rest of the day if you're an intraday trader to look for your signals out there is there anything else that's a signal great question let's go take a look at some of these things that could be signals or at least providing us with information at 1 12 in the afternoon so one of those things that we should do i think that we should do is go take a look at our task market profile um statistics and let's start by taking a look at what are we going to take a look at first. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100, only because that's what happens to default right now on my screen. So we're taking a look at the upper right-hand section out here. We're looking at these speed dials. These speed dials tell us whether for that specific time frame, there is a bullish or bearish market breadth crossover. Whew! If it's in the red zone, it's a bearish market breadth crossover. If it's in the blue or the green zone out there, it's a bullish market crossover. What I mean by that, as an example, so you've got the 60, the 240, and the daily for the NASDAQ 100 that, quite frankly, are all bullish. So what I mean by that, with regard to the crossovers, here's a 60-minute time frame. I'm going to get rid of the uh, instruments that are trading in between profiles. In other words, consolidating between the high and the low of the profile level. Here, what we can see is right now you have 30 instruments for the 60-minute time frame trade above the top of their profile, 26 trading below. It's not a heavily weighted bullish signal, but it's certainly not a bearish signal for the 60-minute time frame. Whoa, we were just looking at the 60-minute time frame. And so this really is helpful. So no wonder price has not even gotten back to the level of support, meaning the top of that 30-minute profile, 11,689, it's because it has this nice bullish market breadth crossover. Now that can change. But if it doesn't change and you see price take out today's high, that's going to be suggestive of a market that's going to move higher. That's the one-hour time frame. If we take a look at the four-hour time frame, we have 37 instruments, so it's slightly more bullish, 37 instruments trading above the top of its profile and 28 below. Now, we haven't looked at a 240-minute chart out there. Uh, we can, but it's not necessary at this moment. If we look at the daily time frame, the daily time frame shows that we have 31 instruments. So this is even more powerful. 31 instruments are trading above the top of their daily profile, 16 below. So this is a very bullish daily 240 and 60-minute market breadth set of profiles. So from a market breadth standpoint, the NASDAQ 100, the NQ, should be able to push higher. And so maybe all it's doing is just getting some rest and some energy to, in fact, make that explosive move higher. Now, I don't know if it's going to be explosive or not, but let's just finish this off and take a look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly is one that still maintains the bearish crossover out there. And bigger picture, longer term, not until that cross is bullish. Right now, there's only seven instruments trading above the top of the weekly profile, whereas you have 45 trading below. So it just looks like it's a potential for a nice counter trend move to the upside. And that's the message of the NASDAQ 100 Task Market Profile Market. of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. 
Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So today for lunch, I had some nice crab cakes, really great crab cakes, really fresh with some uh, with a lemon dill aioli. Now, I think that that lemon dill aioli actually is more like garlic. I have such garlic breath, such garlic taste right now. I've been sucking down the uh, water. I mean, it was great. I love garlic. I especially like tzatziki, you know, if I'm eating some uh, Greek food. Uh, the best tzatziki I've ever had is uh, made out in Detroit in Greek town there. But that was many, 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 many decades ago out here. So uh, Stevie's a bit thirsty. In any event, uh, well, let's go to a first question that has come in. This is from Rachel M. Rachel writes in and says, hey, Steve, enjoying my last day off from the 4th of July holiday. Well, what are you doing here? Get out to the beach. Um, and uh, could you, but thank you for spending your time with us. Uh, could you take a look at Lowe's for me? Ticker symbol there is L-O-W. Having a hard time trying to determine if it's going to bounce or continue to sell off. So great question out there. And right now, I believe the screens, yeah, I've got my black background screens. What this doesn't show you, but I'll just share that with you, is on the trading day of uh, June 17th, you can mark this down in your chart if you're looking at it. That was bar number eight of a TD9 count, bar number nine completed the next day. So you've got a daily TD9 count bottom out here. So you've got a bottom that's in place. You also, on the weekly time frame chart, you can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. Again, all A to B equals CD patterns are going to be confirmed with bullish reversal candles. And what we have out here was uh, the week of June 20th, the week that began June 20th, you've got your bull sash candle. So that sets up support out here at the uh, low of um, 170.14. If there's a close below 170.14, that's telling you that you're headed lower. Now, the overall signal, I'm just looking at the daily and weekly right now, Rachel, is really neutral. And the reason that I say it's neutral is the daily, although it's got a TD9 count bottom, price is back inside its daily profile. If it closes under 178.72 today, that gives us our neutral type signal. If price closes above 178.72, that at least is going to suggest a run for its recent high. That recent high is the trading session from June 28th, and that high is in the 185.61 area. But the real level to be watching as to whether or not this is going to rally 
uh, is going to be the bottom of the weekly profile. So you've got a nice buy the D point pattern. And what price did last week, when it's made its way up to resistance, resistance was 185.54. The actual high of last week was 185.61. So that's the real line of demarcation. Now, even if price can close above that, it doesn't mean that it's outright bullish. What it means is that a counter trend move would take you up to 195.03. So if this does get some legs, and again, you're looking at the daily first, you want to see a second consecutive close above 178.72. Then the next area to keep an eye on is 185.54. And if price closes above that, it might be the end of the move as price gets up to 195.03. And that's looking at the weekly time frame. Now, the monthly time frame. Price is trading below the bottom of its monthly, or close below it, I should say, in the month of uh, June out there. That's not a good scene. More likely than not, over the longer haul, and this is what I don't know, but over the longer haul, price is likely point back to 150.84. And 150.84 is going to be the bottom of this candle right here. That's the bottom of March of 2021. That's 150.84, and that happens to be the low of the TD9 count on a monthly base that's in place. So that's where price could be headed to. Um, the only way you're going to know that for sure on the, is that the weekly negates its uh, by the D point pattern and the daily negates its TD9 count. So, Rachel, thank you for spending your last day on vacation with us here. And uh, now it's time to head to the beach out there and, uh, and, and uh, be, uh, uh, you know, be careful out there. So let's go to our next question. This one coming in from Les J. Les writes in, boy, that's small print. Okay, hold on a minute here. Stevie has to expand this out. Hey, Steve, please look at FCX for a bottom to buy for a trade. Okay, so let's go ahead and put up FCX. Let's uh, get that going here, FCX. And I want to get that going on my white background charts as well. If it makes sense to jump over to those, we will, if I see some kind of a signal. No. Freeport McMoran is trading below daily, weekly, and monthly profiles. So that's not a good thing out there. So where is price headed to? Let's expand out the daily time frame. Let's go ahead and draw in our A to B equals CD pattern. So this one's easy peasy to draw, and everybody would get this one correct. For the A point, you're going to use the high. That high came in on March 25th. For the B point, low is very easy to identify. That was May 12th. And then you can see the counter trend move or the rally up into the June 7th time frame. That is our C point. So what we have here, Les, as you can see, the one-to-one -one A to B equals C D price projection would take us down to 2506. It was a 55% uh, C to D, uh, B to C retracement level. So not you know close enough to the 0.618 level. But if we look at the left side, so if we look at the C to D leg, price is trading along the strong side on the way down. And what this suggests to you and I, Les, is we may see in the case of Freeport MacRan more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals city. Now, I don't know whether we will or we won't. If you do get a bullish reversal candle, now the low today, the so low of this pattern at this stage is 2621 and 2506 is the one-to-one. -one. I think we're still too far away from it and price needs to get closer to that 2506. Doesn't have to get right down to it, but odds would favor at least at this stage here, that price is going to do more than the uh, 2506. But if you did get a bullish reversal candle, that would be your buy the D point pattern. Now, when we look at the weekly time frame and we look at the monthly time frame, those are trading below support levels, the bottom of their profile. So let's go switch over, see if we can find anything on our white background charts. So first, we begin with the daily time frame. Let's just expand this out, see if there's anything else out here. Nothing really. Now, of course, if you did get that bullish reversal, now, oh, this is interesting. Two trading sessions ago, you got a confirmed Rosemont indicator bottom. That lasted basically for that day. The very next day, that was yesterday, price simply took out that low. What price was unable to do here, so this is really helpful, Les, I don't know what your time frame is for FCX, but even if you do get a bullish reversal candle, what we just learned three days ago is that may not be good enough. Instead, what you might need to see is price take out some resistance, at least the oscillator and change line, perhaps even the bottom of its daily profile, 29.75. Uh, of course, doesn't matter at this stage because we don't have any kind of buy signal in FCX. In the case of the weekly time frame, its price target to the downside is 2377. That is its first TD9 count breakout level. Now, price may get below that. We don't have any kind of bottoming signal on the weekly time frame. This also has the A to B equals CD pattern. So if there was a weekly bullish reversal candle, then you would have a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern. On the monthly time frame, you have wave number seven. That's courtesy of a portion of the uh, Basil Chapman wave out there. You also have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. This is suggesting to you and I 
that Freeport McMoran could get all the way down to $9 in a penny out there. Now, we're not going to make that call just yet. Why? Because price would have to close below 2377 in order for that to take place out there. We'd have to come back to the charts. But that is what the monthly chart is communicating to us, Les. So I know that you're looking for an entry uh, for a bottom, as you say. I think uh, the way that I would look at this, uh, depending on the time frame, if it's more of a longer term time frame, I'd make both the daily and the weekly prove itself to us, especially with the monthly being in the position that it's at. So I do hope that helps you out. Uh, thank you both Rachel and uh, Les for writing in. And folks, uh, if I didn't call your name, I would love to hear from you as well. So you can send me an email, send it to Steve at TFNN.com. Try to use some nice, big, bold, you don't have to be bold, but some larger uh, fonts out there just to help Stevie's little eyes, uh, because I'm just uh, grabbing it off of my iPhone. So uh, it's not like I'm taking a large email or something along those lines. We get back from this break. BD inside our tiger stand wants to take a look at ticker symbol PXD for an entry point. That's what we'll do as soon as we get back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, up, folks. So uh, for BD and the Tiger's Den is looking for an intermediate term long-term time frame entry point into Pioneer Natural Resources, we can see that on the monthly time frame chart. So this is what I want you to take a look at, PD. You've got the monthly chart that has a nice TD9 count top, which has now taken price back to support. And support is the bottom of that profile. That bottom profile level is at 203.42. The actual low so far is 203.83. So that works for us. So price is at support. Now, 
we switch our eyes over to the daily time frame, the chart on the left-hand side. You can see the Rhodes momentum indicator signals that have been triggered. Just because a signal is triggered does not mean it is a buy. What you need is a cavalry. You need the market to tell you that sellers are ready to at least attempt to defend a position. The way that they would do that at the completion of a pattern is generate a bullish reversal candle. You don't have that. But that's what you should see if this is going to form some type of daily bottom because on the monthly chart, you have price sitting at support. So right now, you have to be patient. If you do get that bullish reversal candle, that's not going to be today or does not appear that it will be today. Uh, if you do get that, then what you're looking for is how does price handle the 230.77 level? Now, 225.51 can also be resistance. But any counter trend move in Pioneer Natural Resources, that's where it would find resistance at the 230.77 level. We haven't talked about the weekly chart. The weekly chart has an A to B equals CD pattern. It's pretty easy to see. The daily does too. But that A to B equals CD pattern would get you down to 172 and change. And 177 is the TD9 count breakout level. So if you do not get the bullish reversal candle and the price begins trading below 203.42, you know with certainty that uh, price is going to head lower, likely will fulfill that one-to-one -one price objective at the 172, let's call 172 to 177 range out there. But from an intermediate or long-term standpoint, what you really want to see is you'd like to see a bottom pattern on the weekly time frame chart. Now, it doesn't appear that that is coming to a screen anytime soon out there. So uh, be patient. If you get that bullish reversal candle, let's come back to it. Uh, let's see what's going on in the weekly and the uh, monthly time frame out there. So thank you for writing in, BD. I hope that that helps you out. Let's go to our next request. This is coming in from Mike in the Tiger's Den. And uh, Mike wants to take a look at uh, Mosaic. MOS is the ticker symbol. So let's go ahead and get that uh, populated on our screens out here, see what we can see. And when it comes to Mosaic, come on, populate out here. Okay. So Mike is looking for, just says, uh, can you look at Mosaic, Uranium, CCG, CCJ for entry points? Okay. So in the case of Mosaic, what we have out there, you will get to see wave number seven, letter G on my screen. So that's a potential bottom signal. You also see the Rhodes momentum indicator lines that have been drawn. So this is very easy. You're looking for a bottom or an entry point. You want to wait for a bullish reversal candle. Now, even if you get that bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame, your battle, your first battle is going to be at 4607. The price you get above that, 5075, then above that, 5356. Now, what we don't like, although the week is not over, is the weekly time frame formed a TD9 count bottom two weeks ago. And price this week is trading below that low. It's not really where it's trading on Wednesday that's important to us, Mike. It's where it's trading at Friday or where it closes on Friday. But if price does close below 45.13, that's not a good scene. And that suggests lower price out there. That next lower price, well, it would be 34.58 if price were to close below 42.35 out there. So the weekly chart is saying, mm, I don't know if I'm really ready to bottom. This is mosaic. And the weekly time or the monthly time frame chart is I can see a sell the D point pattern. That was confirmed with this uh, big bearish shooting star out here. Price now, if, so here's the possibility. Here's the bullish possibility. If this is just a counter trend move, then this is where price is going to find support. And that's at the center of its bearish structured monthly profile, which uh, when that monthly profile formed, yeah, I can't really say that. Sort of can say that, but I'm not going to say that. So 42.73 is a real key level. So if kind of like the last stock that we looked at, and I apologize, I don't remember which one it was. But if you did get a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame, uh, Mike, that would be confirming the potential of Mosaic just getting back to where a counter trend move would end. So you want to watch that uh, 42.73 level for signals and certainly the daily time frame chart for some type of bullish reversal candle to give you a buy pattern. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Mosaic. URA was the second request out there. So let's go see what its charts are communicating to us. Excuse me, this is the ETF for uranium. Sorry about that, uh, Chew, if you heard it. A little ice cube slipped right through the uh, slot on my... Uh, my Yeti cup, which I can't live without. It's amazing. It's amazing those those cups out there, how cold or how hot they can keep things and for how long. But back to uranium out here. Uranium, what you're looking for, it has a it already has a bottom that's in place out here, and that's a TD Nike out bottom. That bottom formed on the trading day of uh, June the 23rd. Now, if price closes below 1778, you're at 1785 right now. If it closes below that, you will negate that signal. 
And you'll need to wait for another bullish reversal candle to confirm that pattern. That's what the daily time frame tells us. The weekly time frame for URA, let me just go check on the volume here for a minute. URA, and uh, because it passed the B point, and uh, or is passing the B point. So the B point on this has volume of 14 million shares. So far this week, it's a short week. We're at 5 million shares. So hard to say. So you get 5, 10. You, you, you could be pretty close. We've only been trading for two days out here. No, 5, 10, yeah. Uh, likely doesn't have the volume to confirm an A to B equals CD. So on the weekly chart, where price is likely headed to is its next TD9 count breakout level, and that's at the 1674 area. Price is below the monthly profile. So you're below the daily, weekly, and monthly profile. Never really a good scene out there. The monthly says uranium could be pulling back to 1072. So even though you still have a valid TD9 count bottom, on the daily time frame, and that is under threat to get negated today. Um, I just don't see anything really positive here in the case of uranium. Let's go check out the last one, CCJ, Kamiko, out here, see what it is uh, doing. So we'll finish off this uh, tree, this trifecta here. And uh, Kamiko trading right now at 2058. That, by the way, is below its daily and weekly profiles. It is just trying to get back inside the monthly profile. So you've got a, on the monthly, you've got a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. The weekly, Rhodes Mintum indicator top and TD9 count. And on the daily, you've got a TD9 count bottom that is being tested. That's the candle session from May 12th. Now, the candle session from May 12th did volume of 9.2 million shares. You pulled back into it on June 30th with 5 million shares. So again, that was 5 million. That was going against 9 million. Couldn't bust it out. Today, you're at 3 million shares. You're trading in that swing point. So right now at this stage, what and I, I know you couldn't see the volume because I left this on my white background screen out there. I didn't want to really change back and forth. Um, it doesn't appear to have the volume yet to take out this swing for May 12th out here. Does that mean it's not going to be able to take it out? No, it just means it hasn't taken out. It doesn't have the selling down there. I don't have any kind of real. Well, you've got that. You've got that buy pattern, that TD9 count out here. Um, is that enough to go ahead and take a trade? Yeah, I don't know. I just, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So we can call it like this. You're still kind of above support on the uh, weekly. That's the breakout level. You're sitting at support, the top of the uh, monthly profile out there. Um, I'd like to see it close above that green oscillator or the red oscillator and change line. That is at the uh, 2129 level if you're going to go ahead and take a trade. And then if you do, know that you've got resistance at 2248 and in 2377. So, I hope that helps everybody out inside the Tigers. That was BD and Mike. And thanks so much for the uh, questions out there. I see we've got some additional questions inside the Tigers. Den. This coming from uh, Sat. And uh, Sat wants to take a look at ticker symbol LIT. So when we get back to this break. We're going to light it up. Go take a look at ticker symbol LIT for Sat inside our Tigers. Den. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're going to take a look at ticker symbols, LIT. That is the Global uh, Lithium and Battery Tech ETF out there. Now, these are the holdings. So during the break out there, I went ahead and downloaded the holdings uh, inside of this uh, ETF. And uh, what we'll see here is the majority of these holdings are overseas holdings. In fact, you got LB Morrow. Uh, that's a U.S. holding out there. Which else is one that I can pick off of the U.S. Tesla? Uh, is on there um, and not a lot else Intersys that's a US QuantumScape that's US but you can see the majority of these are um, either China Hong Kong um, and a few other international exchanges now the importance of that is that you and I can't really do an analysis of what this is doing. Well, you could do an analysis if you had the data feed. I don't have those foreign exchange data feeds in order to be able to go out there and take a look at, uh, you know, what are the top 10? I'm curious. Well, I don't know if I can tell you. The top 10 instruments inside this ETF represent what? Uh, here, I'm just going to do it in my head. So here's here's the top 10, 10 holdings. So you got 10, 16, 22, uh, 28. 28, 33, 38, 43, 47, 51. So you got 55, the top 10 holdings out here, and only one of them is U.S. base, um, is over 50% of the holding. So you really want to understand how those instruments are trading. The other thing that you've got with regard to being, do, being able to do an evaluation of this is the fact that you've got currency movements now. So, you know, that's why I've, I see all these gaps out here. So do these gaps mean anything on ticker symbol LIT? Well, they don't mean the same thing as it would on, let's say, if we were looking at the, the chart for Apple or Microsoft or Google or whatever it might be. So these gaps are, to, in my, from my standpoint, they're basically meaningless. Now, the reason I wanted to share that with Sat is because if you are trading this and you're looking at the charts out there, ignore those gaps out there. Because I don't really think they are as meaningful uh, because we've got the international stocks as well as currency conversions that are taking place out here. But you're looking for some type of an entry level out there. So the best uh, that I can provide to you with regard to an entry level on this, if we look at market profiles, uh, we've got a nice TD9 count on the monthly time frame. So in the upper right, price pulled back and tested support. That was a bullish structured monthly profile. So that said support was between 58.11, 61.34. Uh, price actually got down to the low of 61.67. Perfect. So price is held. Likely price is going to go target 81.41. That's the monthly chart. 
The weekly chart says not so fast. I'm back below my red oscillator and change line. I probably want to make a move if I'm bullish down to 67.30. And if I'm not that bullish, I'm sort of bullish, I'd make a move down to 63.55, 62.70. So if you ask me, where is an entry point on this? From a weekly standpoint, I'd be watching 62.70 out there. I'd want to see how price behaved when it got to 67.30. Should it get to 67.30? And there's a chance that it's going to price it below the bottom of its daily profile. Right now, if it closed below 71.83, that then suggests a further retracement. That further retracement could get down and test the June 16th level. That low was 69.16. Now, when price was getting down there on June the 16th, it had a profile. We knew where the buyers were located. And that's why price held where it did. We don't have that profile anymore. There's a new profile since then. So you want to really take a look at the volume as price is moving into that swing point. That swing point, by the way, has volume of 833,000 shares. So it's not the most liquid of stocks out there. Um, so you'll want to watch that. Now, yesterday, price tested that with 774,000 shares. So it was a test and rejection. But because price is still below the bottom of that profile set, it's not exactly like it's proven itself to you. So I hope all that made sense to you with regard to what to look at inside of LIT. If I was going to trade this, I would go ahead and invest in uh, the exchange fees and uh, pay attention to what those individual stocks are doing. That is really, quite frankly, the uh, better way to be doing an analysis on an ETF like that. So thanks so much for the request out there. Let's go to our next question. The next question is coming in from Dennis G. Dennis wants to take a look at Apple and Microsoft. Let's take a look at one here. We've got a few requests that are in, and I want to get to those. So, Dennis, if I, I can get through, through the other ones, we'll certainly take a look at Microsoft. But I'll go ahead and put Apple up on our screen as soon as I can type in the correct symbol. So in the case of Apple right now, Apple is trading where? I believe it's trading above the top of its daily profile, and that would be bullish. So let's just, oh, geez, what uh, my, uh, okay, that's fine. Um, APO. So now what we can see here, yeah, so Apple is trying to take on resistance. So what's our outlook for Apple? The outlook is pretty simple. If uh, if uh, price can close above the top of this evening star pattern, that's the one that formed right around June the 27th, that high is 143.49. You're 142.40 right now. If price can close above 143.49, what you'd have is an A to B equals CD to the upside. Now, volume-wise, Apple is moving into a swing point that did volume of 70.2 million shares. It's 147, and you're at 41 million shares. So it's a bit lighter volume, but I don't know what it will look like at the end of the day. If at the end of the day, price closed above 143.49, you'd have an A to B equals CD to the upside. If you have volume of more than 70 million shares, then you'd have a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Does that mean if you don't have the volume and you close above it that you won't fulfill an A to B equals CD? No, it does not. But if you do close above with volume, it just simply increases the odds that you will. So you want to watch, uh, Dennis, It's uh, when I say what's my outlook or the chart's outlook is, if price closes above 143.49, price is headed higher. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, you've got a nice TD9 count bottom of this form. That is suggesting that price should be able to get up to its oscillator and change line. That's at 147.41. And if price can close above that, Apple wants to make a, ro a run to 163.75 or 167.64. TD9 count on the monthly time frame. Price is back inside its monthly profile. What that means, if it can close back above 140.48 on a monthly basis, then last month's close below it was a false breakdown sign out there. So, Dennis, I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, with regard to uh, Apple. Uh, less writes back and less a small print. Uh, Steve, that was exactly what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, uh, perfect. Uh, I won't read the rest of it, but I think I appreciate the uh, kind comments. I'll read them uh, most certainly uh, once I'm off the air. Nick writes in, uh, please see below. B -b 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 boy, good morning. Uh, uh, oh, boy. So I think what Nick wants me to take a look at is the SMHs, Nick, out here. So let's do that. Let's get the SMHs. And uh, Dennis looks like we're going to have enough time to get over to Microsoft and take a look at that. So let's take a look at the SMHs out here. I don't believe we have any kind of a bottom signal. I believe on the SMHs we've got an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. 
Um, so when we take a look at the SMH, yeah, there's on the weekly chart is is easiest to see the A to B equals CD pattern. At least it is for me because the B point sticks right out at us. That B point out here is going to be the uh, week of April the uh, first, April Fool's week out there. So the one to one has already been exceeded. That was 20305. As price got down there, we didn't get well. You did get a bull sash candle. That was a couple of weeks ago. Um, out here, but that didn't last. That got negated. So you need another on a weekly basis. You need another bullish reversal candle to be able to confirm an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the cool thing about the weekly time frame chart, Nicholas, is the oscillator and change line. That has capped any advance in price. Every rally that's been attempted has found resistance at the oscillator and change line. So when will the SMH give us a signal that it's ready to move to the upside? Pretty simple. When it can close above the weekly oscillator on change line and that's not in the cards as we speak right yet speak right yet i believe i just got a failing grade when it comes to although that we can call that stevie grammar steve Rhodes with tfnn you're right Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks, uh, folks uh, garlic, breath, and all, of course, referring to myself. Now, we're taking a look at the start, stock charts out here for uh, Microsoft. And uh, really, this is a pretty easy one. This was a Dennis G who had a request for it. Now, when you take a look, we just looked at, I don't recall which stock chart we looked at, but uh, we were looking at the weekly time frame. 
And the weekly time frame for Microsoft is showing us the same thing out here. Take a look at that at that oscillator and change line, which has absolutely acted as a resistance level, quite frankly, ever since the um, ever since the month of uh, December. In this is yeah, this is a weekly chart, December seventeenth. Uh, of 2021 and so there have been a couple of attempts for price to get up and maybe uh, and it actually did try to cross above it back in uh, the april time frame uh, made an attempt to do that again back here on june the 10th made another attempt last week and so price found resistance so price is right up at that oscillator and change line again dennis on a weekly basis if microsoft can close above 266.22 right now the number will change just slightly that would be a bullish outcome on a weekly basis now there is resistance in the case of Microsoft on the weekly time frame chart. It sits at 273.91. If price is able to close above that, then the range you're looking at for resistance, where the sellers would be located, would be between 293.30 and 294.51 out there. You've got a nice weekly TD9 count bottom out here. In the case of Microsoft, even though it's not drawn in, you've got a nice confirmed by the D point when it comes to the daily time frame. The weekly chart, the monthly time frame chart out here, price did close last month below the bottom of its profile. Price is trying to regain that, so it may be signaling a false breakout to the downside. But if you close back below that, if you take out the weekly TD9 count, that's telling you we're headed lower. Not until you get a weekly close above that oscillator and change line will that signal that there's some kind of solid bottom in the case of Microsoft. Folks, thanks so much for joining me here on Wonderful Wednesday. Stay tuned. You've got two more great hours. Your favorite polar bear, David White's up next. He might get the fireworks lit because at 2 p.m., I believe they release the uh, Fed minutes out there. So have a wonderful Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again, hopefully tomorrow, 1 o'clock sharp. Take care, folks.